you may be seated. Good evening and welcome to Greenview High School's commencement ceremony for the class of 2016. This year, due to a construction project at Cedarville University where we have traditionally held commencement, we are privileged to be guests at Wright State University's Nutter Center. Graduates, let me begin by saying that for some of you, tonight marks the moment that your biggest life dream will come true. Your opportunity to be featured on the Jumbotron in a major athletic arena. <laughs> Kidding aside, tonight, as you receive your diploma, you do take the first step toward the Jumbotron of life. The past 18 years of your life have been preparatory, laying the foundation for whatever path you choose to pursue. We believe each of you is special, created to fulfill a unique purpose in this life. This diversity of purpose is seen in your post-secondary plans. 48% of you plan to attend a four-year college. 26% of you intend to further your education through a two-year college or technical school. 9% of you will serve our country by heading directly into the military. and 16% of you plan to go directly into the workforce. More than likely, these plans will change somewhere along the line as you become more aware of your own unique gifts and abilities. But regardless of your life decisions, I want to encourage you to live a life of transcendence. If you'll indulge me for just a moment, I'd like to offer you one last vocabulary lesson before we send you on your way. In good news, if Mr. Haynes or Mr. Seavers were speaking right now, you'd have one final math lesson. So what does it mean to live a life of transcendence? Merriam-Webster's offers the following definitions. Going beyond the limits of ordinary experience. Far better or greater than what is usual. Universally applicable or significant. Collectively, these definitions indicate that living a life of transcendence is about living out those universally esteemed ideals. Things such as compassion, service to others, truthfulness, and basic goodness. Living life in this way cuts through every artificial classification a sociologist might use to categorize people. C.S. Lewis refers to this concept as the law of human nature. Regardless of where you go in the world, basic concepts of right living are universally held. Lewis states, for instance, think of a country where people were admired for running away in a battle, or where a man felt proud of double-crossing double all the people who had been kindest to him. You might as well just try and imagine a country where two and two made five. Men have differed regarding what people you ought to be unselfish to, whether it was only your own family, or your fellow countrymen, or everyone but they have always agreed that you ought not to put yourself first. Selfishness has never been admired. We see this concept of transcendent living in the life of individuals such as Mother Teresa, Mohandas Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., and Princess Diana. Their basic belief in the inherent dignity of all individuals has cut through or transcended cultures and generations. But, I have also seen this concept of transcendent living at work in the class of 2016. As a group, you have often united around common causes to benefit others. A few notable examples stand out. This winter, you temporarily set aside the Battle of 72 to partner with Cedarville on a greater cause, helping a young community member in her battle against cancer. Between your fierce Charlotte campaign with Cedarville and your fundraising efforts for the Jamestown Family Cancer Center, you raised over $5,000 this year to help fight cancer. Your simple acts of kindness and genuine friendship with classmates with special needs, 
And I want to point out that others outside of the Jamestown community have taken notice. This week, Stephanie McQuarrie received a letter in the mail from Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine complimenting her on her accomplishment and complimenting you on coming alongside of her. Students in our National Honor Society, led by students from the class of 2016, completed over 800 hours of community service this year alone through individual service projects. Chris Jones, for instance, organized a blanket collection for an overnight shelter in Xenia. And Kenzie Cochran collected bottle caps to offset the cost of dialysis for a student from another school. Seniors Emily Hilbig and Sarah Penwell, along with junior Haley Whitehead, collected items for their Envelope project, which resulted in them delivering care packages to patients at Dayton Children's Hospital with the goal of brightening their stay at the hospital. While each of these projects was initiated by an individual student or group of students, I want to emphasize that none of them would have been possible if the rest of you had not chosen to rally around these common causes. This, class of 2016, is what transcendent living looks like. As you leave Greenview High School, there's going to be a temptation to live for self. Adver advertisers pitch the lie that living for self brings happiness because they know that it results in sales. All you need to do is think about the way many popular products are marketed. I personally love Apple products, as do many of you, but I hate the focus on self conveyed through their product line iPhone, iPad, iMac, even the strange cultural phenomenon of the selfie has been made possible through the emphasis these new technologies have placed on self-gratification, resulting in even stranger accessory products such as the selfie stick. Now I'm not trying to paint with such a broad stroke as to say that all of these things are bad. Obviously many of you will take selfies with your classmates this evening to preserve the special memories associated with graduation. But I would challenge you to think about the lasting joy and satisfaction that resulted from the service projects I mentioned just a moment ago. Whatever your post-secondary endeavors, find a way to use your gifts and abilities to serve others. As Ronnie Drennan put it in his What Series talk a few weeks ago, it is important to find your what in life, but it's even more important to find your why. In the spirit of what I've just shared, before we begin the ceremonial portion of our program this evening, I would like to briefly acknowledge those individuals who have made it their why in life to serve students and make events such as our commencement ceremony possible. First and foremost, I feel privileged to work in the Greenview Local School District with such a committed faculty and staff. Each day, I have the pleasure of going to work and being inspired by the sacrificial devotion of those working in our district. It is evident that working with young people is more than their job, it is their calling. Will all district teachers, aides, office personnel, and support staff stand at this time to be recognized? More specifically, I would like to thank Debbie Clark for taking care of all of the plants that you see this evening, the banner, and a lot of the other details intended to sort of shrink the space and make it a little bit more intimate despite the size. I also want to say thank you to Kathy Carr for her work on the graduation program and all things associated with making sure that our students are able to walk across the stage this evening. I'd like to acknowledge the Board of Education members who are on stage this evening. Their willingness to give of themselves has made our district a place where teachers can teach and students can learn. The stability they provide is foundational to the success of our, of our district. As I call your name, please stand to be recognized and you can hold your applause until all board members have been acknowledged. Board President, Kathy Hollingsworth. Board Member, Suzanne Arthur. Board member, Todd Ireland. 
Board member, Scott Powers. And board member, Teresa Wallace. I also want to thank our superintendent, Mr. Isaac Sievers. He makes educational decisions through the lens of a father, and our schools are better as a result. Thank you, Mr. Sievers. With us this evening, we have several distinguished guests. Please stand as your name is read. Greene County Career Center Director of Satellite Programs, Ryan McCourt. Senior Class Advisor Paul Thompson and Assistant Principal Greg Haynes. <laughs> Guidance Counselors Jeff Zipes and Kim Reffitt. <laughs> Band Director Mike Bush and Choir Director Jennifer Joss. I would also like to thank our underclassmen National Honor Society members for ushering this evening. Leading our se seniors in were Madison Kilbarger, Caitlin Schloss, and Robbie Angle. At this time, I would invite the Sensation Show Choir, under the direction of Jennifer Joss, to the risers for our national anthem. I also would like to invite those from the class of 2016 who have enlisted in the armed forces or intend to enlist to the front of the stage to be recognized during the national anthem. Please stand and remain standing following the national anthem for the alma mater. Gentlemen, please remove your caps.
You may be seated. As we enter the next part of our program, I'd like to pause for a moment to acknowledge those students who have served in leadership positions for the class of 2016. As I read your name, please stand to be recognized. Senior class president, student council president, and National Honor Society president, Kristen Combs. Senior Class Vice President, Alex Witt. <laughs> Student Council Vice President and FFA President, Cody Myers. <laughs> and National Honor Society Vice President, Emily Reinhardt. Please join me in welcoming salutatorian Evan Reinhardt. Evan finished high school with a 4.5 grade point average and will major in mechanical engineering at Wright State University. First, I would like to congratulate the class of 2016 for making it through these past four years of high school. The journey was long and hard at times, but it was worth it. Now, we must all embark upon journeys of our own. These journeys will not be like high school, because each one will be unique in its own way. Some of you may wish to attend college. Others may go straight into the workforce. Some will major in science and math related fields, and others in medical fields. Wherever your journey after high school takes you, remember these words spoken by Michael Dell, founder of Dell Incorporated. The quote goes, as you start your journey, the first thing you should do is throw away that store-bought map and begin to draw your own. I encourage each of you to not follow in the footsteps of those before you. Instead, create new paths, explore new ideas, and live like no one ever has. Also, I encourage each of my fellow seniors to strive to be the best they can be in their lives past high school. We have all came a long way to reach this point in our lives, but why should we stop here? Through hard work and dedication, I know each senior sitting before me is capable of making an impact on the world. Conversely, if we fail to work hard and persevere through hard times, we will remember that this is because we followed the store-bought map, rendering our lives wasted. I would like to share another quote with you from Will Rogers. He said, even if you are on the right track, you will still get run over if you just sit there. Many of you sitting before me are on the right track, but you must keep going or the past four years will be for nothing. All of you have done great things in your lives so far, and I hope that you'll continue to do so. The list of accomplishments by the class of 2016 is long and great, but the success of our lives is measured on what we do past high school, which, why, which is why I encourage everyone here to create a map of your own and strive to do, the, to do great things in your lives. Again, congratulations, class of 2016. Today, we ended one journey and embarked upon another. Next, I would like to thank all that have helped me to get to this point in my life. First, I would like to thank my parents for always pushing me to work harder in school and sports, even when I didn't want to. Without you, I would not have been able to stand here today in front of thousands of people or have been given the honor to write yet another speech. Thank you for that. I would also like to thank my friends for making these, past, these last four years fun, exciting, and especially humorous. Matt knows what I mean. Without you all, soccer, tennis, and track would have been boring and I probably wouldn't have played those sports at all. Also, I would like to thank my sister, Emily, for forcing me to do my homework and work hard to try and keep the same grades, which I failed to do so. <laughs> Thank you, Ian, for making me feel like a kid again every time I played Nerf, Legos, and ping pong with you. Thank you, teachers, for, for providing me with the knowledge I need to be successful in college and become a person. Thank you, Jackie, for putting up with me no matter what. 
Thank you to all my family members. Without your guidance, my life would not be the same as it is. And lastly, I'd like to thank God. Without his guidance, none of this would be possible. Class of 2016, we made it. Have fun, make good relationships, and strive to do your best. Thank you. I'd now like to invite our senior choir ensemble to the risers. They will be singing 100 Years by Five for Fighting.
This year we have two valedictorians. I will introduce them in alphabetical order and invite each to the podium to address their classmates. First, I'd like to recognize co-valedictorian Kristen Combs. Kristen finished high school with a 4.6 GPA and will continue her studies at Indiana Wesleyan University. Thank you, and thank all of you here this evening for your role in impacting myself and my fellow graduates as we sit here today. I would also like to thank the administration for this opportunity to speak, but unfortunately for all of you, I do like to talk. A fact that I am sure any teacher that has read any of my papers can attest to, and this one's for you, Mrs. Benton and Mr. Robin. I'll try to keep it under 10 minutes. The funny thing is, though, now that I've been awarded valedictorian, I realize that after all of these years of homework, research, and late night study sessions trying to meet my deadlines, I have, ever, I have only ever turned in one assignment late this speech. Sorry, Mr. Mosser. And I may or may not have been making edits on this at 12 a.m. this morning, but here I am with a somewhat cohesive compilation of words that hope, hopefully half of you listen to. To those of you zoning out right now, it's okay, no hard feelings. Writing this speech was a fun challenge. I have so much to say, and I struggled with deciding on just what I should say to all of you and you, my classmates. But then, sitting in my room, I looked up and I saw my inspiration. I have a canvas that reads Ephesians 1.11. It is in Christ we find who we are and what we are living for. I want to challenge you, class of 2016, to find yourselves, your real selves. All these years, we have been chasing the people we wanted to become, the girls and boys that the culture has told us to become. And we followed. Some of us live for sports, some of us live for partying, some for school, and some for relationships, and some for things that I don't know anything about. But we all live for something, and now it's time to move on. To become the men and women instead of the little boys and girls. Don't be just another person doing just another job in just another place. This is our chance to test who we are and what we are made of. And I promise you that there is greatness for each and every one of you. I know this for sure because God promises it to all of his children. And before we are anything else, we are his creations. And he crafted each one of us for a special and unique goal, to be you, like Mr. Mosser was talking about earlier. No one else on this planet is just like me. I like to read and I like to write and I love to play basketball. I eat lots of ice cream and Cheez-Its and Mexican food. I have three awesomely annoying siblings whom I can't imagine growing up without. I mean, really, I'm a ginger and I wouldn't have survived if Kyle hadn't have told me all of the ginger jokes first. And my sister, Caitlin, she was always the first one to tell me not, that not a single piece of my outfit matched. Sometimes I did though, so that was okay. And then of course there's Kevin, my not so little brother, who had an endless supply of youth and Nerf guns that probably let me hold onto my tomboy ways a little bit longer than what was ladylike. But nobody else had my parents or my life experiences to make them just like me. All my smiles, tears, laughter, every hurt and joy, that's what makes me me, and it's culminated into who I am right now today. Each of you has a similarly different story that has made you, you. I pray though, that one day you come to know your creator and realize that everything that makes you, you, and everything that has happened to you to this point is for a reason and that, that there is a plan for your life, a good, beautiful and fulfilling plan that is better than what you guys are probably hoping and dreaming for yourself right now. I'll tell you a secret. I am terrified to walk across this stage and receive my diploma. I'm so scared to leave this room and enter the unknown, but thankfully, I am not afraid to wake up tomorrow and face whatever the Lord has for me. Good, bad, it doesn't matter. High school may have ended last week, but reality starts tonight. I want all of you guys to walk across the stage tonight and smile for the camera, hug your friends, eat that face cake, and maybe even cry a little bit over the memories. I promise you, I will be eating that cake. High school has been fun for the most part, but it's time to move on. Every moment leads to the next moment, and here we are doing the exact same thing. We're already in the next moment. I don't know how many moments I will have on this earth, but I do know that I don't want to waste a single one. Be you, class of 2016. Be yourself and love yourself. God has given you this moment to take and grow from it. Earlier I mentioned Ephesians 1, 11. God has given us a purpose. I truly believe that the only way we can find our real selves is in Christ, but that's up to you to decide. 
He is who and what I live for. He's my what and my why and my how, as Ronnie said earlier this year. He's the reason that I wake up and the reason that I work to get to this point behind the podium. God's plans for me and my classmates, for all of us sitting in this room, they are so magnificent and better than what we could think. And yes, I can't let this moment pass without telling you how desperately he loves each and every one of you, which leads me to challenge you to one last thing, class of 2016. Don't give up on yourself. Don't ever, ever stop believing in who you are or where you can go. To quote one of the most famous, deep, and philosophical minds of the 2000s, Hannah Montana once said, nobody's perfect. Seriously though, nobody is perfect. Not me, not your mom, not the president, nobody except for Jesus. I may mess up and I may fall down, but my savior is always there and his grace catches me every time. And now it's time for the monotonous list of thank yous. For those of you who have zoned out, you might want to listen because this one's for you. Once again, I just wanted to thank all of you here tonight and those who couldn't be but are watching at home. We want to thank you for raising these men and women that are sitting before us. They are some of my beloved friends and I wouldn't have known them without you. Thank you for loving, supporting, and challenging us to do great things. To the class of 2016, thank you for the memories. I'll never forget the games spent with the Ramtourage or the various pranks we pulled in Mr. Robin's room. By the way, if anybody wants to hear a good story, ask Mr. Robin the safest place to keep his pens. It's a good one. Or the times that we got lost into New York City, or even the days right before Christmas that we were forced to spend together, even though it was against our will. It's been fun, and although it's sad to see it end, I can't wait to see where we end up. To the Greenview faculty and staff, thank you. Without your care and patience, I wouldn't be up here making lesser, fewer grammatical mistakes. You have taught us all so much, both in the classroom and in life. Most of the time I appreciated you, but for those of you with whom I never shared this appreciation, you know who you are, please take it now. I respect you and am thankful for your time, energy, and selfless service to humanity. My coaches, all of you. I have tried my hand at a lot of sports here at Greenview and I enjoyed them all. My one day at golf was truly life-changing. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Honestly though, coaches, you are some of the most influential people in teenagers' lives and you've gotten us this far. Words cannot describe my gratitude in growing me on and off the court or green and I love you all for it. To my parents and family, thank you for raising me with the expectation of excellence. Early in my life, you instilled morals and goals in me that I have always aspired to meet. You have loved me unconditionally and supported me through it all. I love you. To Caitlin, I know you didn't expect this thank you, but I wanted to thank you for being my role model. I was always your shadow and annoying little sister, but I really have always looked up to you. Thank you so much, and I love you. To my friends, thank you for keeping me a little bit sane and a little bit insane as well. Lisa, Emily, Jasmine, Kendra, Valerie, thank you for being my shoulders to cry on and the source of quite a few ab-busting laughs. Emily, thank you for pushing me to be the best me. You are truly a one-of-a-kind friend. Lisa, I hope you're not crying yet, but thank you for being my mentor and another sister to me. I love you all. Ani, I still remember the moment that I met you. Thank you for coming all the way from Germany to be my best friend and drink copious amounts of frozen hot chocolate with. I love you. And of course, I want to thank my Lord and Savior. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. But by now, I'm pretty sure you already know that. So go on class of 2016, open all your cards and enjoy your grad parties. I'm proud of how far we've come, but remember that our journey has just begun. Be you and be blessed. And one more thing, this one's for Mr. Mosser. I have a selfie stick <laughs> and we're all going to take one. <laughs> Everybody smile. <laughs> Thank you all. I would now like to introduce our senior band ensemble. They will be performing the song Danny Boy arranged by Warren Barker.
Next, I'd like to recognize co-valedictorian Emily Reinhardt. Emily finished high school with a 4.6 GPA and will major in athletic training and pre-physical therapy at Aquinas College. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for being here. Friends and family, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the entire class. You've done so much for us and we appreciate you coming to celebrate this accomplishment with us. Now I would like to thank God, for without him I would not be where I am today. I'd also like to thank a few specific people that have played a major role in getting me into this position. Mom and Dad, you set an example for me to follow and encouraged me to work hard and achieve my goals. Ian, I could always count on you to be my number one fan in everything I did. Evan, you've always been there as someone to compete against and you're the most caring and supportive opponent and brother I could ask for. Chris, Chris Jones, you've been like a third brother to me and I could always count on your mad rap skills to wake me up in the morning. All the teams and coaches I've had these past four years, you taught me how to be humble in victory and embrace the challenge of defeat. Lisa Hawley, you were not just my basketball coach, but also a friend who was always there for me and a loving person that I looked up to. Also, thank you to everyone who helped to make my high school time memorable, especially Kristen Combs, Jasmine Rockhold, Annika Haman, Caitlin Combs, and Jackie Hall. Now, how in the world did we get to this point? It seems like just yesterday that I was a scared and very shy freshman. I came to Greenview terrified of having to start high school, especially while I only knew a few people. In the beginning, I convinced myself that it would be fine if I just kept to myself throughout high school. Well, that plan was ruined in my first class on my first day. Caitlin Slate sat down next to me in geometry and talked to me the whole time. I was very nervous and I didn't know what to say back, but she refused to let me sit there in silence. I can't express how grateful I am now that she wouldn't let me be shy. I believe that Caitlin embodied the good-natured and friendly quality that defines the class of 2016. It almost seemed as if everybody talked to everybody, and that made for a fun four years. On that first day, I had made my first new friend, and it didn't take long before the whole school knew and welcomed me. By senior year, this school had transformed into an exciting place full of people I care about. This brings me to a quote by C.S. Lewis that goes, quote, Isn't it funny how day by day nothing changes, but when you look back, everything is different? End quote. As we journeyed through high school, our focus was on turning in homework that was due two weeks ago not on the fact that we were slowly getting older and preparing ourselves for a new beginning in our lives. Well, today is that new beginning. We have all worked very hard to get here, and I would like to congratulate my classmates for not giving up. High school's now in the past. Presently, we're sitting through a long and tiring presentation to get a piece of paper. As for the future, I have no clue. We all have our dreams, plans, backup plans, but none of it is set in stone. It could all change in a second. We may have to adapt to different situations and there may be a change of plans along the way. But no matter what you find yourself doing in life, be thankful for how you got there and make sure it's taking you somewhere. Mia Hamm says, quote, celebrate what you accomplish, but raise the bar each time you succeed. While graduating high school is a big accomplishment, we all must now raise the bar. This isn't it. We still have the rest of our lives ahead of us. I know that each and every one of you is capable of doing great things. I'm glad I got to know you guys these last four years, and I can't wait to see what the class of 2016 does next. Thank you. Will Ani, Z, Kristen, Cody, and Alex please join me on the stage at this time?
With us this evening are our special friends from Germany and Thailand, exchange students Ani and Z. We are blessed to share our lives with Ani and Z this year, each of whom addressed their classmates at the Senior Class Awards Program last week. In just a moment, as a symbol of friendship and goodwill, we will continue a long-standing Greenview tradition of exchanging country's flags with our exchange students. Before we do, please join me in thanking Ani and Z for enriching our lives this year. Uh, if we could, I would like to have um, Neil and Julie and Ralph and Amy please stand. They gave their time and effort this year to host Ani and Z, and I would like to recognize them and thank you for their time and dedication for presenting this opportunity to us. At this time, I'd like to present certificates of attendance to both Ani and uh, Z and thank them for all the memories that they've made with us and we hope we've impacted you guys half as much as you've impacted our lives. Thank you. I'd like to thank Daniel Sage for that piece. Um, most of you probably don't know this, but Daniel started taking piano class as an, a course offering we offer at Greenview High School, and um, it was very impressive. Thank you, Daniel. That's one year's growth out of a, a class we offer during the day. If you've been to graduation before, you recognize graduates, we're almost there. When I stand up, it's almost go time, okay? So just bear with me one more moment here as we wrap this pro part of the program up and we transition to the part that we all came here for this evening. During my first meeting with staff as a superintendent, I shared a vision for Greenview that I hope you've been able to experience in your last four years. It went something like this with the staff. This is not about me. This is not about you or the countless other new things we will experience along the way. This is about our students. 
and the true gift it is to impact the lives that have been entrusted to our care. I see it that way. Their parents, your parents, entrust them to us to be taught, to be molded by someone other than their family for the first time in their life, and that's a big responsibility. My wife and I, during this period of time, have given over two of our kids to be molded, to be trained, to be taught by the staff at Greenview. And I'm confident that Greenview is the best place to send them. They will be cared for and taught by some of the most talented and caring people I've ever met. Our teachers impact our own children's lives and the impact on all the students in our classrooms and buildings will be and has been transformational. Students, my hope is that Greenview has been a place where your life has been impacted and that your time with us has been transformational. I appreciate the work of all the dedicated staff of Greenview Schools and I want to personally thank you for caring for our students and impacting the lives of this group of students over the past 13 years. My hope for each kid coming through our system is that, that they will experience a relationship with at least one adult that was encouraging, that was empowering, that was transformational. Long after you're gone and you forget your biology or algebra curriculum, you will remember meaningful relationships and meaningful events. It's been my pleasure to be a part of this class, to see you grow, to see you transform, and to see you accomplish great things and experience growth and development. My hope and dream for you as you commence in life in the real world today is that you will continue to grow, to experience life to the fullest, and to achieve great things. I want to share with you a lesson I've learned in the last several months. It's a lesson that sometimes is hard to learn, but a lesson that I needed to learn because life was passing me by and I wasn't learning, I wasn't growing, and I wasn't changing. I'd like to share this conviction with you because I hope that it can share some experience with you, some encouragement to you, some challenge to you. It came while we were on a recent road trip with my family in the van. Our kids who were four, six, and eight wanted to have our phones for entertainment. I started thinking about how they're growing up and experiencing life much different than I did. See, I didn't have an iPhone when I was a kid. I had that alphabet road sign game. I don't know if you've ever played it before, but we had to look out the windows. We had to experience the journey. If we were in a city, I won quickly. If we were driving in the country, it could take two hours to find all of the letters of the alphabet. We also play this great game called I Spy. My four-year-old loves that game now. It's transitioned away from Siri. Their favorite question for Siri is, Siri, can you beatbox? I don't know if you've done that before. It's quite humorous, actually. And they often just say to me, Dad, just Google it. My life, my experiences are different than theirs. But what I realized is I'm attached to my phone. It goes as I go, and I was missing life along the way. I wasn't looking out and experiencing the trip. I was looking down and following along on somebody's newsfeed. I recently came across a poem that eloquently depicts this struggle between being connected to devices and being connected to each other. Gary Turk wrote a poem, Look Up, which ironically went viral on the internet. Look up from your phone, shut down the display, take in your surroundings, make the most of today. Just one real connection is all that it can take to show you the difference that being there can make. My challenge was to be there. I was missing out on much of the journey because I was looking down at my display. He goes on to say we are at our most happy with an experience we share, but is it the same if no one is there? Be there for your friends and they'll be there for you too, but no one will be there if a group message will do. He finishes by saying, look up from your phone, shut down the display, and live life the real way. Seniors, I want to encourage you this evening to look up from your devices and take in all the world has to offer you. When we're looking down, we're unable to see and be inspired by the world. 
we're unable to develop meaningful relationships that truly define life. And we're not able to connect with those that may need us to be completely present with them there. My challenge to you is the same challenge I'm living out in my life. Look up from your phone and take in all that life has to offer you. At this time, I'd like to ask Mrs. Kathy Hollingsworth, school board president, to please step forward to beside the blue table. Class of 16, with the authority vested in me by the State Board of Education, I now declare that the members of the class of 2016 have met the prescribed graduation requirements of the Greenview Board of Education and the State Board of Education. Mrs. Hollingsworth, will you please present the diplomas? John Michael Allison, son of Kevin and Nikki Allison, will attend University of Northwestern Ohio and major in high performance motorsports and diesel technology. <laughs> Allison Lynn Aerosmith, daughter of Cheryl Osborne and Doug Aerosmith, will study speech pathology. <laughs> Benjamin Atkins, son of Ron and Wendy Atkins, will attend Cedarville University and major in nursing. <laughs> Jaden Andrew Bays, son of Andy and Tanya Bays, will attend Liberty University and major in business. <laughs> Luke Anthony Barker, Son of Ronald and Janet Barker will attend Wright State University. <laughs> Shania Lee Barnett, daughter of Linda and David Barnett, will attend the University of Kentucky and major in pre med. <laughs> Taylor Nicole Bond, daughter of Brian and Melissa Bond will attend Sinclair Community College and major in nursing. <laughs> Bailey Bennett, daughter of Stephanie Squires and Brian Bennett, will be working with animals. Brandon Nicholas Bordale, son of Dar and Pam Bordale, will attend Wright State University and major in chemistry. <laughs> Joshua Daniel Brakal, son of Bobby Haynes and Danny Brakal, will attend Miami University and major in computer engineering. Haley Ann Brittingham, daughter of Sherry and Steve Brittingham, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in social work. <laughs> Brittany Lynn Brown, daughter of Todd and Sherry Brown, will attend Theo College and major in web development and media communication. Victoria Brown, daughter of Aaron and Dee Brown, will attend University of Northwestern Ohio and major in high performance motorsports. <laughs> Alana Victoria Sari Bryant, daughter of Chrissy McKenney, will enlist in the United States Navy. Lauren Nicole Carroll. Daughter of Randy and Kristen Carroll and Amanda Hughes Roberts and Randy Roberts will attend the University of Rio Grande and major in Diagnostic Medical Sonography. <laughs> Elena B. Clark, daughter of Kent and Debbie Clark, will attend Clark State Community College and major in Social Work.
Mackenzie Marie Cochran, daughter of Doug and Jamie Cochran, will attend Wright State University and major in nursing. Kristen Jo Combs, daughter of Kelly and Jody Combs, will attend Indiana Wesleyan University. Adlin Couch, granddaughter of Brenda and Pat Zare, and daughter of Tanya Couch, will attend college and major in accounting. Cassandra Sue Crum, daughter of Benjamin and Tammy Crum, will attend Eastern Michigan University and major in medical and mechanical engineering technology. Austin Kenneth Cyphers, son of Chris and Mike Baker and Larry Cyphers and Terry Engelman, will further her studies to become an electrician. Matthew Thomas Daly, son of John and Angie Daly, and his plans are undecided at this time. Brad Davis, son of Terry Davis and Mary Carlson, will attend Hawking College and major in fitness management. Maggie Davis, daughter of Robert and Philomena Davis, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in dental hygiene. <laughs> Michaela Dean, daughter of Aaron and Cindy Dean, will attend Kent State University and major in zoology. Caitlin Sue Drawn, daughter of Kevin Drawn and Monica Angoff, will attend Clark State Community College and major in social work. <laughs> McKenna Jade Edwards, daughter of Bryce and Stephanie Combs, and her plans are undecided at this time. Walker Irwin, son of Phil and Christine Irwin, will attend Wright State University and major in biomedical engineering. Benjamin Aaron Evans, son of Angela and Anthony Evans, will attend Wright State University and major in computer science. Nicholas Arnold Fife son of Spud and Kelly Fife will be joining Fife Enterprises. Declan Nathaniel Fogel, son of Steve and Tara Fogel, will be enlisting in the United States Marine Corps Security Forces. Jessica Ann Felino, daughter of Greg and Cynthia Felino, will enlist in the Navy Reserves as a fire controlman and then attend Wright State University in pre-med. <laughs> Leslie Elizabeth Freetag, daughter of Lee and James Freetag, will attend the University of Dayton and major in sports management. <laughs> Harrison Gallagher, son of Amy and David Gallagher will attend Hawking College and major in ecotourism and adventure travel. <laughs> Jacob Allen Geringer, son of Rhonda and Josh Brown and Chuck Geringer, will attend Bowling Green State University and major in film production. Jarrison Patrick Gilliam, son of Penny and Kevin Gilliam, will attend Ohio Christian University and major in business administration. <laughs> Caleb Joseph Green, son of Joseph and Vicki Green, will attend Otterbein University. Brooklyn Nicole Grizzle, daughter of Joe and Stephanie Grizzle, will attend Wright State University and major in nursing. <laughs> D 
Dakota Dawn Hall, daughter of Brad and Akela Hall, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in dental assisting. <laughs> Bryson Handorf, son of Keith Handorf and Angela Landaker. His future plans are undecided at this time. Will Harding, son of Rob Harding and Ann Mercadell, will participate in the Electrical Apprenticeship Program. <laughs> Abigail Hawks, daughter of Angela and Michael Hawks, will attend Miami University and major in linguistics. <laughs> Hunter Heathcook, son of Dale and Wendy Heathcook, his future plans are undecided at this time. Brianna Ray Henry, daughter of Sean and Connie Henry, will attend a two-year school and then transfer to Wright State University. Brooke Ann Henry, daughter of Sean and Connie Henry, will attend Wright State University and major in art education. Emily Marie Cheyenne Hilbig, daughter of David and Rachel Hilbig, will attend Wright State University and major in early childhood education. <laughs> Lexis Ann Hildebrand, daughter of Sean and Annette Hildebrand, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in dental hygiene. in the United States Air Force. Josh Jenkins, son of Sean and Michelle Jenkins, will attend Shawnee State University and major in game design and simulation. Nathaniel Christopher Jones, son of Zanita Ruffin Gibson, will attend Shawnee State University and major in biology. Nathan Kirk, son of Matthew and Michelle Kirk, will attend the University of Akron and major in business. Brandon Christopher Coleman, son of Kimberly Bone and Matt Coleman, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in business. Allison Dawn Lyle, daughter of Pamela and Jeremy Lyle, will attend Heidelberg University and major in criminal justice. <laughs> Stephanie K. McQuarrie, daughter of Daryl and Gwen McQuarrie, will attend Echoing University. Lindsay Jordan Merrill, daughter of Gary and Melinda Merrill, will attend the University of Cincinnati and major in archaeology. <laughs> Jacob Isaiah Mickle, son of Richard and Angela Mickle, will enlist in the United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Cole Moore, son of Ronnie Mulliken and Scott Moore will attend the University of Northwestern Ohio and major in agricultural diesel. Cody Allen Myers, son of Donnie and Michelle Myers will attend The Ohio State University and major in agri-science education. Connor Brianne Myers, 
daughter of Donnie and Michelle Myers, will attend Bowling Green State University and major in criminal justice with a specialization in forensic investigation. Chance Neville, son of Holly McDuff and Chris Neville, will attend University of Northwestern Ohio and major in diesel technology and agricultural equipment. Emily Jean Newton, daughter of Earl and Lisa Newton, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in American Sign Language Interpretation. <laughs> Valerie Elise Nix, daughter of Sean and Missy Nix, will attend Wright State University and major in Early Childhood Education. Alexander Nixon, son of Joy Scott and Sandy Nixon, will attend Ohio Northern University and major in pharmacy. <laughs> Tyler Nolly, son of Shane and Brandy Nolly, has enlisted in the United States Army as a working dog handler. <laughs> Leah Carol Pease, daughter of Ray and Michael Pease, will attend Miami University and major in music education. Deanna Marie Pennewitt, daughter of Jennifer and Wesley Robinette and Joshua and Nikki Pennewitt will study physiology. Sarah Nicole Penwell, daughter of Judith and Kenneth Pen Penwell. Her future plans are undecided at this time. Austin James Michael Petrie, son of Tammy and Jamie Petrie, will study business marketing. Matthew Tyler Preen, son of Philip Preen and Gina Marie Preen, and stepson of Maria Preen will attend Western Michigan University and major in flight science. Jack Randall, son of Stan and Jerima Randall, will enlist in the United States Marine Corps. Logan Reed, son of Jeremiah and Renee Reed, will enlist in the United States Air Force. Emily Susan Reinhardt, daughter of Mark and Melissa Reinhardt, will attend Aquinas College and major in athletic training. Evan Reinhardt, son of Mark and Melissa Reinhardt, will attend Wright State University and major in mechanical engineering. Jasmine Lynn Rockhold daughter of, Ro of Rocky and Angie Rockhold, will attend the University of Charleston and major in biology. <laughs> Courtney Lee Rausch, daughter of Missy and Stephen Rausch, will attend Clark State Community College and major in nursing. <laughs> Owen McKenzie Ruddick, son of Dwayne and Lori Ruddick, his future plans are undecided at this time. <laughs> Elena Saunders, daughter of Tom and Natalie Hoven, and Jeff and Laura Saunders will attend Sinclair Community College and major in interior design. <laughs> Jack Elam Scott, son of Dana and Jared Scott, will attend The Ohio State University and major in chemistry. <laughs> Caitlin Slate, daughter of Brian and Angie Slate, will attend Wright State University and major in nursing. <laughs> Logan Test, son of Dale and Kim Test, will participate in the electrical apprenticeship program. Elijah Cade Tyree, son of Roger and Connie Tyree, will enlist in the United States Air Force for aerospace technology engineering. 
Kendra Noel Upchurch, son of, daughter of Bruce and Tina Upchurch, will attend Wright State University. John Robert Vipperman, son of Robert and Krista Vipperman, will study art and interior design. Monica Annette Weatherford, daughter of Tanya Motti and Thomas Weatherford. Her future plans are undecided at this time. Shelby White, daughter of Tammy and Kevin White, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in veterinary technology. Logan Louise Wilson, daughter of Michael and Heather Wilson, will attend Wright State University and major in early childhood education. Alexandra Lee Witt, daughter of Brian and Kara Witt, will attend Wright State University and major in dental hygiene. Chloe Kayana Jean, Wolf, daughter of Randy and Dana Wolf, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in nursing. <laughs> Jessica Ray Wooten, daughter of Johnny and Wendy Wooten, will attend Sinclair Community College and major in nursing. <laughs> Bailey Ray Yost. Daughter of Jason Yost and granddaughter of John and Kathy Yost will attend Bowling Green State University and major in early childhood education. Students, at this time, I ask that you stand and place your hand on, your, on the tassel in a ceremonial move used for decades to signify your completion of one journey and the start of another. I now ask that you take your tassel and move it from one side of your cap to the other. It is with the great honor that I present to you the Greenview High School graduating class of 2016. I ask that you remain seated as our students collect their caps and recess out of the gymnasium. Again, thank you for being here this evening to celebrate with us. Thank you for your support of the Greenview Local School District in the class of 2016. Have a safe trip home and God bless.